Hello and welcome to this Adobe InDesign tutorial. I'm going to be introducing you to some of the more creative aspects of the application and on how to create um, specific shapes and forms in a very simple way yet um, compl complex forms. So uh, in order to do that I'm going to be using this tool to start with the rectangle, ellipse and polygon tool and after or as I create my shapes I will use the Pathfinder. The Pathfinder is uh, a really uh, fun tool, very effective and powerful indeed within Adobe uh, InDesign. It actually comes originally from Adobe Illustrator. But it's a nice little add-on that has appeared over the years. Uh, if you don't find it here in your uh, panels you will find it in Window and let's see where is it hidden this uh, one is actually not as easy to find as the other ones but you will find it here in Object and Layout and you see that it's right here Pathfinder so I'm going to go, uh, to go ahead and grab my pen so that it remains visible at all times um, so off we go, let's create some shapes. So you can see here I'm just creating rectangles, creating lips, or creating polygons. Now, if you haven't experienced this uh, before, when creating a shape, if you hold down the shift key, for rectangles you will be creating squares, for ellipse you will be creating perfect circles and for polygons you will be creating symmetric shapes so you won't be able to distort them, it will be perfect. Alright, so that's uh, first of all what you can do to create specific shapes uh, if you want to create perfect shapes. Now, one thing that I want to show you now is on how to use those simple shapes in order to create a lot more complex shapes and use them in your layout. So in this case I have a rectangle and an ellipse. I'm going to go ahead and overlap them in such a way for instance and why don't I increase the size of my ellipse to make it fit with the height of my rectangle here. Now if I select both of those objects you'll see that uh, I will be able to use one of these functions within the Pathfinder. So the Pathfinder here ha um, has five different options. Uh, the first of which is to add, to combine the selected objects into one shape. So it pretty much does what it says. So if I select both of those shapes and click on here, you see that now I have a new shape that is the result of both previous shapes so that's uh, to start with now I'm going to cancel uh, what I just did so I get my two shapes back you see that I have two shapes because I have my stroke color now um, that's back so if I select both of my objects now and I click on the second one you'll see that it says subtract which means that the, um, uh, the shape that's in front of the shape that's underneath here, yeah, so in, in um, this particular example my circle above my rectangle will act as a cutting tool and subtract itself to the rectangle. So what does that give us? This is the result. So you can see that it creates yet another, uh, another shape using just another command. Now I'm going to go ahead and cancel this and go to the third option. Now our third option is to intersect. So it's going to uh, keep actually uh, the common part of both those shapes. Now remember you can do that with more shapes and we'll do that but in this case I have two so I'll go ahead and click here and you see that the only part remaining is the intersection of both shapes. Now the fourth one is quite a, uh, an amusing one as well. It just it does exactly the same but the opposite way. So it uh, uh, keeps everything but the intersection. So off we go. 
and we, we create such a um, such a shape. Now this is one particular shape which means that if I change the color let's say um, or if I apply a gradient uh, this way the gradient runs through the whole shape. Um, this is one shape which means that using the intersection uh, tool here uh, this is actually nothing. This is not part of the object, this is transparent and I'm going to show this to you right now so if I go ahead and create a shape I'm going to put this shape underneath this one and I can do that in various ways but I'll go ahead and go to object arrange and send to back and you see that my object here the one that's on top is really transparent so this is not white, it's transparent, so it's quite cool. So if you want to put, I don't know, text or other objects underneath, um, it's it's really all right. And now the only option remaining is minus back. So what this does is actually the same as the subtract, but it's going to do it the other way around, which means that in this case, and I'm not going to do it, but I'll just explain it to you, the rectangle would have been used to cut out the this portion in this case of the circle so it just does the same as here but just um, uh, uses a different the, the the objects that are underneath instead of the objects that are on top um, I'm not really convinced actually by how this is useful because you can just go ahead and use this and change the order of shapes uh, of your object uh, within your page if um, you actually need to perform this. So now that we've seen the basics I'm just going to show you uh, a, a few examples of what you can achieve with this. Um, say for instance I want to create uh, a pyramid like shape um, with spaces in between. So I can go ahead and create my rectangle as such. Now I want to create a vertical triangle so I'm going to be using another option that's available in the Pathfinder is the convert shape. So pretty straightforward uh, tool and pretty much does what it says. So I'm going to click here on uh, convert shape to triangle and off we go it does that. So I'm going to keep on creating shapes and for instance I'm going to create horizontal bars as such and I'm going to repeat them using the step and repeat tool if you don't know how to use this tool I strongly advise you to go ahead and check the video about it so horizontal 0 and vertical let's try 10 uh, maybe 8 and I think I'm happy with 8 and I'm going to go ahead and create quite a few in this manner. So now that I have my uh, series of lines here and my shape underneath, I'm just going to go ahead and select the whole bunch and click on this subtract. So what is it going to do? It's going to use the lines here that I've created to cut out this triangle shape my little pyramid here so I'm going to click on it and off I go and my very very complex shape that I would have to be uh, that I would have to have created manually before has now been created very very easily now I can actually change a little bit the proportions of my shape this is a shape uh, which means I can do whatever I want with it uh, which means placing for instance an image as well within the triangle so why don't I go ahead and um, show you this so I'm going to select my object going into the file menu place and I'm going to select an image right here I'm going to click in the middle. If you don't know how to deal with images, please go and check out the video tutorial. So off I go and I'm going to K 
cancel out my stroke because it heavily disturbs me so I'm going to go ahead and put it to zero and there you go you see uh, how I have very easily created a complex shape within Adobe InDesign and um, used it in a, a very unusual fashion in this particular case uh, I've used it to make an image appear in such a way that it creates a pyramid shape but with transparency here in the middle so once again this is transparent you see that I see whatever is underneath here well um, that was it for this tutorial obviously there are so many things that you can create with um, a combination of shapes and um, the pathfinder I wish you success and great fun with it and I'll see you in another video tutorial bye